Rivals, welcome to Bax Attacks. Today we are getting to a very overdue area of uh, the game, Rival Kingdoms, and that is base design. The reason I haven't talked about it much recently is I haven't been too worried about it much recently. Currently, I am Stronghold level 12. However, I pretty much have still a Stronghold level 9 uh, layout. In fact, you can see over here, this is what we get new at Stronghold level 10. That's all you get new in terms of uh, buildings or walls in Stronghold 11. And this is what we get at Stronghold 12. All right, so today we're gonna uh, look at some general concepts, some different uh, types of bases, and when and why it's important to upgrade your Stronghold. Now, I basically stayed at Stronghold 9 very long, maxed out all the defenses and got the walls near max, and then shot almost immediately to uh, 12. So I do have some catch up to, uh, to play. Let me... In fact, here's how it looked back at Stronghold level 8, where it was redesigned and to tr try to get away from giving away free uh, mana and get everything in better position. Let me just start by um, going through some of the bases within our kingdom to show the variety that we have in there. Alright, so this is a stronghold level 10, and this I've had on uh, bases as well, and I pretty much call it the blob design. You have everything on the inside within just a single layer of walls. The idea or the benefit here is that you can t pack in the uh, defenses very tightly. Uh, the problem is that it's it's so easy to, uh, to breach the walls. There are a number of uh, buildings that are that are free to uh, sniping by air and then once the troops are inside there's nothing stopping them from getting to the uh, stronghold so the blob is, uh, is is simple and it's very common for lower stronghold levels but for uh, stronghold level 9 and up that's not something you want to continue to uh, to use okay here's the first of a um, different kind of design where you start to have internal walls and you see this um, this core here is very common you've got enough space for the primus conduit and four defenses next to it and then something that it's uh, guarding usually a, a, a true portal or something out front or maybe a bunker and then off to the side you have some additional uh, defenses here such that if troops are are coming in from the direct north or south, they're going to get hit by some uh, catapult fire, regardless of which direction they uh, they come from. So that's a uh, that, that's a benefit to having this kind of um, central core and then buildings off to the side. The problem with this specific layout here is just the number of free buildings that you can snipe. So there's all of those free up there. Those are free. That one's going to be free as well, as well as the blacksmith. So, and this because there's some walls sitting outside, this looks like a um, a basic addition to Stronghold uh, Nine. So that's an improvement over the uh, blob, but there's just there's too many free buildings in this type of uh, design right here. Okay, here's a Stronghold Eleven, and it looks like. A fairly basic design. It's 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 still a blob. It's got uh, double walls on two sides, um, and with the catapult sitting out here, oddly, I'm going to guess that's a uh, a relatively new addition. I'm going to guess Mist hasn't changed their base in in quite a while, but it looks like they're trying to defend against free buildings or having buildings on opposite side for the dragons to sweep by. That looks like a new addition. It's not protected. That was a new addition as well. But here the defenses are covering stuff. The Primus Conduit is in a uh, decent position. There's priority given to physical damage, in this case with the Spell Towers kind of guarding the opposite side. Alright, so that's a Stronghold 11 design that looks like it's been kind of left at a, at a Stronghold 9. Alright, here's a Stronghold 11. 
Similarly, it looks like the walls have been kind of slapped on at the uh, at the end there. Got some good anti-air down south, protecting the two portals well. Two portals are protected very nicely. That's a that's a benefit to this design. Primus conduit is a little bit uh, deeper into the base. It's all physical damage there. And there's a wall surrounding the uh, stronghold coming from the north as well. The problem there is that this, this kind of design just invites people to clear out the side buildings, come from the south, and they're, all of this stuff is out of range. So good protection from the north, not good protection from the uh, south. And tries, well, no, this, this, there's nothing protecting these buildings out here. That's not going to stop the dragon from sniping them. So, all right, that one looks like it could use an update as well. All right, here's another kind of advanced uh, blob design here for Stronghold 11. The uh, larger buildings are just intentionally, it looks like, left unprotected. There's some protection against air, strong anti-air here. The problem is this, these spell towers aren't going to be able to defend against air against these buildings here. And so I imagine what happens a lot on this base is Viscaria would just sweep across from this direction over to here, cut through the Primus Conduit, and pop right in. And Kerosene is heading to Stronghold 12, so hopefully there'll be a redesign there. Uh, Primus Conduit is focusing on the uh, physical, and nothing too special and kind of low level on the uh, spell towers. So Kerosene focuses on offense and has a decent base design, but one that's going to be hurt by a lot of uh, different type of attackers. All right, let's see what kind of base Sir Wallace has. All right, he's Stronghold 13, and this is the first where we're seeing of a completely different uh, design. On um, This is an Antley funneling base design with a, uh, just about all the anti-air is on the outer ring. He's got some inside to protect the Stronghold. That's good. You need to do that. And he's got the Primus conduits separated out with a combination of spell towers and physical on both. So this is a pretty decent design. I like this one. I'm just taking a closer look here. Yeah, he's got nice coverage. And basically, if you just drop the troops down without thinking too much, they're going to circle around the base. And they're going to get hit with the catapults, which are kind of toward the exterior. And by the arrow launchers along the way. So if you attack this type of base without thinking, you're going to get hurt pretty bad. He's got several walls just sitting out there not doing much. Maybe that's to um, determine where the, uh, the troops can deploy. All right, so that's, that's a different style of base, anti-funneling, and that's a, that's a pretty good one. That's a Stronghold 13 design. All right, Ice Dragon with Stronghold level 12 has another new type of design, and it's one I call the Southern Teaser. That's a term popular in Clash of Clans, and basically you have all your uh, defenses and most of your buildings down south, and a big thick line of walls up top that make it very difficult to get through. So they're basically encouraging the attacker to attack from the south, and if they do, they're going to face some very powerful um, uh, defenses. There's not even any uh, walls down here and what that means it, with no compartments is that the defenses are just packed super tight together. So if you were like a you know a troop right here um, or over here you're gonna get just hit by so many different defenses at once it's gonna be pretty painful. And then up top he's got sky watchers to protect from mana hunters just swooping in from the north and destroying that. Probably not quite you probably need a little bit more up there, including a watchtower, to, to stop that after the change to the um, Skywatchers that makes them not so painful versus Mana Hunters. 
but before that swap, this base was probably pretty effective. The focus here is on the physical defense, and the spell towers are kind of spread out quite a bit. There's three of them at stronghold level 12. So unfortunately here, if you knock out one building with just you know one spell by Jal or with a four bell in this direction, the other spell towers are completely out of play. Nice level 35 there, 30. All right, so yeah, this maybe this base was around before or popular before uh, spell towers became more important, and probably no uh, no Zilla yet. So that's the uh, southern teaser design, and it can be quite effective. All right, Falcons got a stronghold eleven version of the southern teaser. Likewise, a pair of Skywatchers up top, preventing from a north entry. Got the uh, these builder huts. They're not uh, randomly placed. Those are actually helpful in that if you try to send in Mauler or melee units to get through here, your soldiers and paladins are just going to go around the side to the builder's huts. So those are helpful to have there. Got some um, watchtowers here again, so that if you drop a Mauler up top, it's going to target this instead of this. So that's why these are on the side. That's a common feature in the Southern Teasers. And here he's placing much more important on the Spell Towers. So he's got three right around the Promised Conduit. He's got the other buildings surrounding that. There's the Arrow Launcher. All right, so that's a, that's a pretty, pretty decent layout for uh, Stronghold uh, 11 for a Southern Teaser design. Oh, the King is lazy. Look at this bad King. Stronghold 13, he's still using the Blob design. Got a bunch of buildings out here that are new from 13. And he's got some big buildings here from Major sweeping all across the base. Apart from those exterior things, the interior focuses on physical defense here with the Primus Conduit there. Got spell towers kind of spread out. There's an insanity one. And the anti-air is sprinkled around the inside as well. There's uh, that building is a little bit too free from from sniping. And see, whenever if you have a free building inside the walls like that, all the dragon has to do is is take that out, and then the troops can can just pop right in the hole, and they can get into the base without even having to break through a wall. Likewise, you can come in here. That's not going to be able to protect it very much. And there's really no anti-air protecting the arrow launcher. So I'm going to call out the king on a bad base design here. And the reason is, frankly, that our uh, sentinels have some really very strong bases. And if they get through them, the king is toast anyway. But to protect better in the arena and versus player versus player, definitely need an update on that base. All right, Don Juan is doing very well in the arena and on attacks. Let's see what he's got on defense. He's stronghold level 11. And he's got a very compact base design. Notice here that the whole base is tucked up into the corner. And what that means is that your any troops deployed up top around here won't have much free space. And so the watchtowers will be able to, uh, to hit them. He's got some spell towers on the Primus Conduit. Insanity Tower from the north. Protecting the stronghold from any direction. Catapults have good coverage. Anti-air, not bad. The Dragon Roost is not snipable. That's good. You can probably take that out with a snipe and then drop the troops in. But you're going to have to deal with those very quickly. So that's a blob design for Stronghold 11, but it doesn't allow much sweeping for dragons, and it's up in the corner. So if you're going to go with a blob design still, that's probably the best we've seen so far. All right, let's take a look at our two sentinels now. These guys do a lot of work for us in our raids, and they do change them from time to time. <laughs> All right. PK wants to drop a little bit in honor, so he's got his stronghold on the outside, but obviously it typically goes right there. And what we see here, he just hit stronghold uh, 15. Congrats. 
The defenses have a little bit of catching up to do in terms of their level, such as the flare tower, but the design he's got is the single core anti-funneling design uh, that we saw earlier. He's got anti-air spread out through the base, and there's a real, um, the buildings are very close. And so those are going to serve to uh, funnel all the troops to go around in a circle while you've got exterior catapults and the arrow launchers uh, looking to take them out. He's got the spell towers, which are shorter range, closer protecting the, uh, the stronghold, as well as the flare tower. So that's not a bad design for stronghold uh, 15. That's going to be a tough nut to crack. You have to uh, definitely figure out how to funnel the troops in, as well as how to deal with the spell towers once you're, once you're inside. All right, and the last base we'll look at is by Meower. And he's Stronghold 14, looking to get to, to 15 soon. And he's got a different kind of base design that you can do at higher levels. He's got a full double ring. So um, similar to the other design we just saw, there are still a large number of uh, anti-air and defenses sprinkled around the building, uh, but there's a set of external walls that the that the attacker has to, to breach. That makes it harder to to break the, to make a funnel in that you have to have troops go through uh, two separate walls if they want to do that, or they can try to breach at one spot, uh, they're, they're naturally going to go around in different directions. And then on the inside, again, he's got the um, spell towers on a conduit in close range to the stronghold, as well as the uh, the flare tower. Because of this ring structure, he's got his uh, long range units out here, protecting very nicely. And there's not not really many free buildings, no free mana here at all. Those are all no mana buildings out here, and these I think are all within range. All right, so nice design. That's the uh, double ring defense, and he's using that at Stronghold 14. So that's the range of types of buildings that we have within our Kingdom of Current, and there's a few other common designs, and I'll try to uh, uh, show you those next. But first, let's take a look at what new buildings you actually get for each of the Stronghold levels, and which Stronghold levels you definitely want to do a full redesign for. At Stronghold 9, you get that first arrow launcher. That is a biggie. In addition, you get the third spell tower and a new smelter and true portal to protect. So if you haven't done any base design before Stronghold level 9, this is a good level to start. Stronghold 10 is not a big change except for a third catapult. So uh, if you want to modify what you're done and not do a full redesign, I, I would understand that. Stronghold 11, you get no new buildings at all definitely don't need to do a redesign unless you're looking to do something with those um, with those three extra walls. Stronghold 12, you get a second arrow launcher, that's also a big thing, and a troop portal. But Stronghold 13 is where you definitely need to do a base design or redesign. You get so many new buildings. There's a sixth watchtower, a fourth spell tower, third sky watcher, and a second primus conduit. That definitely can't just be slapped in anywhere. And you have to think carefully about whether you want to do a double conduit or separate them out on the two sides. In addition, you get a new smelter and a storage that you need to place and protect. Stronghold 14, the big feature there obviously is the new flare tower, and it's definitely a good idea to think carefully about that and possibly do a uh, redesign. Stronghold 15, you've got 7th watchtower, and with three more walls, you can basically uh, take your pick of any of the designs that we're going to talk about later. So if nothing else, get a redesign around Stronghold 9 and 13, even if, like me, you're focusing on offense, and hopefully you get some ideas of what types of bases to consider in doing that today. All right, so next let's take a look at some of the bases in the individual tournament to see if we can find any uh, good or different designs. Uh, I don't usually come in uh, top on this, but I was very pleased to see that happen this time. Oh, well, here's a notice. Our farm has been upgraded. Thank you, Don Juan, for your heavy contributions there. And we get a number of new members now. Awesome. Got lots of room if anyone else wants to join in Touch Arcadians. I really enjoy this kingdom. Okay, after looking at most of the top 10 bases were all blobs or designs that weren't particularly effective. Here's one by Lobo of Bloodlust. That's a stronghold level 11 that's got a full double ring. So that's quite interesting. 
Looks like he's pretty new to the level with some new uh, walls there. He's got a sky watcher watching the large buildings, not giving those away free. The anti-air is kind of spread out a bit. No mana up there. On the inside, he's got three spell towers as well as all the long range physical defense. And his Primus Conduit uh, is only charging up two buildings. That's a downside here. At Stronghold 11, um, I'm not sure if you have really enough space to get a full four defense around the uh, Primus defense, Primus Conduit, and still get a double ring structure. Uh, I don't see many double rings at Stronghold 11. I'm really curious how that one uh, works out. If you happen to be watching Lobo or Kingdom Maiden and Bloodlust, uh, let me know how this base is working for you. Okay, here's a partial double ring at Stronghold 10. You don't have the walls to make a full ring, but he's got a very limited number of gaps where the attacker can come in without breaking through the walls. And so units are naturally going to tend to go in that direction. He's got three spots for the Primus Conduit. Spell towers near the stronghold. Anti air all around here. So that's good. He's doing something different here at Stronghold 10, trying to uh, prevent free sniping and try to uh, get the troops to have a hard time getting into the core. And he's got some good defenses there when they do get in. Okay, here we see a full bow tie at Stronghold level 10 by Iceman33 of the Kingdom Hunters. He's got a few buildings spread out here, here, here. Oh, and down here. I would definitely move those in here if I could. Just too much free mana. And that's good for the dragon sweeping as well if, if uh, Viscaria attacks the space. All right, but it, at Stronghold 10, again, you don't have the, the walls to get a good layer of protection here or here. So the attacker has an additional um, opportunity instead of come, having to come in here or here. You can place your troops right in here. The mauler will go straight for that and then come right in. So these walls aren't really doing anything here and here. I think they're better off trying to beef up the, uh, the walls in this area. But he's got full four defenses there. Kind of heavy on this side, I guess, because it's easier to come in. And you, probably, you don't really want two cursed towers like that. Um, troops getting hit by one or two doesn't matter. It's the same effect. You're better off with a, a, a if they can't heal, you're better off with either a crippling or a freeze or a fire on top of that. All right, but that's interesting to see a, a bow tie at uh, Stronghold level 10. Folks coming across that for the first time are probably going to be confused on how to attack it. So, Iceman, if you're watching, let me know how that base is working for you. Okay, here's the last base we'll look at in our tournament. It's a Stronghold 10. And most of the fences are in the inside, packed together. There are walls uh, making it difficult to get in from the south. And there's distracting buildings here, pulling the troops around. The Sky Watcher is preventing the free snipe there. The base is pushed into the corner. So those Sky Watchers are going to be in range of troops as they're deployed up there. So that's where he's got his two portals. And Primus Conduit is... Got two uh, freeze towers and a crippling one, and then a uh, catapult as well. So that's that's definitely a better design than your than your basic blob, uh, while keeping most of your defenses on the inside, preventing snipe of uh, free mana, making it hard to get in from the south because of the walls and the huts. And the uh, arrow launcher still covers all the inside of the base and these wings here as well. That's a pretty good design there at uh, Stronghold 10. Curious how that uh, 
works out. I'd probably be prone to come in with four Vel from the top with those freeze towers at a range of, of this at the beginning and, and lots of free, not, not free mana, but lots of mana to get. But uh, looks good. Okay, so here's um, another type of base design which I'm starting to see a lot more often. I call it the, uh, the bow tie. And basically it's got a big uh, cluster over here and over here. It's got the split up Primus Conduits, the spells on the inside. And it's got kind of a, a set of wings over here that prevents you from coming in uh, due east or west. And then it's got a spread out uh, collection of buildings on the uh, bottom, again, so that any troops deployed up here will tend to go around the base. And as they do, they're going to get hit by the long range buildings very nicely. So that is one type of bow tie. Kind of a bow tie with protected um, uh, defense. This is very similar except there's not a separate set of compartments there. So all the buildings on th this outside here are unprotected from walls. And this one you might call a bow tie with clips. He's got a building there and there so an extra set of walls to go through. And the idea with the, uh, with the bow tie is that your troops are going to take a fair amount of damage coming in toward the stronghold, and then when they get here, while they're sitting, breaking through the walls, they're going to get absolutely hammered by all kinds of physical and spell defenses. It's very tough. All right, my favorite uh, ancient to use against the bow tie is Jal, and I'll go ahead and, and uh, give that a try here live. The idea is that we'll build up the mana we need down here, shut down the uh, the spell towers, and then attack. My time is short here, so I better get to that. And I gotta switch my ancient quickly. All right, so we'll go ahead and deploy quickly. I may not be high enough level to do this. This is an approach I use frequently with my higher level attack. And as soon as they're within range, I'm going to start laying those down. I'm going to soften up a little bit with Viscaria. Probably too early. All right. Get the other ones locked down. Come on, Viscaria, come back. All right, so here's where all that damage is occurring now. Let's get a heal. Sweep in Viscaria. Uh, let's see here. Nope. So that's how the bow tie works. It's very effective. For a minute, I thought I was on my stronger account. My troops um, are they uh, they are just not high enough level to uh, to make that assault just yet. They can't take all the damage that's coming in uh, together nor is my jaw high enough to have enough mana to have done a, um, a darkened sky on that. So that's why the bow tie base is uh, effective. Okay, I'd like to give a shout out to a very useful site, one that particularly has some good stuff on uh, base design layouts, and that is rivalkingdoms.ninja. And down here you'll see Several good videos. Some tips and tricks. They've got different um, stronghold levels covered. And the one that I like the most here And the one I like the most here is six base design layouts for Stronghold 9 and 10. And it's by Ash. I watch him a lot for uh, Clash of Clans, but he's got some really good Rival Kingdom videos as well. So that's if you're uh, near Stronghold 9 or 10, that's definitely one you want to check out. And I've got some uh, ideas that I pulled out of that one as well. So um, that's a good one.
RivalKingdoms.Ninja, thanks for that, and hope you continue to add more good base designs, especially for uh, stronger high, for higher stronghold levels. Let me wrap up by reviewing uh, the different base design styles that you're most likely to see between stronghold level 9 and 13. The blob is a basic design you see a lot earlier, but it's time to uh, move on from this one. The only advantage there is that the build the defenses are tight and can protect each other nicely. A base design I didn't show today, I refer to as the egg carton. It's got all kinds of different uh, tiny compartments and each one has its own space. Not a big fan of that, but uh, it does at least make it difficult for the troops to break through the walls and get in there. The southern teaser is a very popular design where you have very, very heavy walls on one side of the base, virtually forcing you to come in from the bottom. Uh, actually, what you want to do is come in through the side in most cases. The bow tie has two distinct hubs with the stronghold in the center and clusters of buildings on either side. The exterior ring is one of the, um, an important anti-funneling design where you have a number of anti-air units, sky watchers and, and uh, watchtowers, in order to uh, get the troops to try to run around the village. The double ring takes that further when you have more walls and it has two complete sets of rings with those same buildings and anti-air between the rings, and that's a strong anti-funneling design. And at lower stronghold levels, when you don't quite have the walls to do a full double ring, you can still uh, have patches of walls and have some openings. That's also a good way to try to uh, force the troops in one direction or keep them from getting to where they want to go on the inside. So there's a number of great choices for base designs, and what we're going to do in upcoming episodes is to look at each stronghold level from 9 through 13 and go through some more details and give some good base designs for each of those. So definitely come back and check out that. If you'd like a base review, um, I'd like to offer that. Uh, let me know your in-game name and kingdom, and I'll see what I can do and uh, talk about your base. And if you have a good base, particularly would like to see that, maybe we'll feature that in the uh, upcoming base design levels. So, thanks so much for watching.